The next thing I want to introduce you to are anonymous structs. And to do that, we're going to go to the Golang Playground again, where we've been writing all of our code. So far, so good. We've been able to do everything at this website right here. And uh, we'll create an anonymous struct. So let's say that I just needed a struct to use in one little area of my program. We saw up here that we created our struct before by, you know, doing type person, underlying type as a struct. And then we did our fields here first and as a string and last and as a string. And we had age and it was an int. And then we formatted all of that and we created a person. <clears throat> And we said, this is going to be a type person. So there's our composite, composite literal. There's the type, and then the type, and then the curly braces. And sometimes you'll hear, hear people you know, refer to composite literals as a struct literal, or as a map literal, or a slice literal. Just use the phrase composite literal. That's the best phrase to use. And uh, now I'm going to populate this. And then last is a uh, bond. And age is 32. And I need my trailing comma. Format it all, and now I need to use it, otherwise it throws an error, because you can't have a variable which is unused. So now that's all working, very nice. So if I wanted to, I could, and this is like the first step, so I'll put this into our course outline right here. And we'll do code, and a bullet point, boom. And if we wanted to, we could make this an anonymous struct. And to do that, I would just take this part right here. I'm going to cut it from up there, get rid of type person where I'm creating a type, and I could just drop it in right here and format that. And so here I have my composite literal. Before I had person and curly brace. What was person but an identifier which represented a struct with those fields? So instead, and remember what that looked like before, right? It looked like this before, right? Type person and then put person here. Well, what is person? Well, it's a struct with these fields. Well, instead of just putting type person here, that identifier, we could do a little substitution and put what person is representing there. And person is representing a struct with these fields. So I could just take that struct with those fields and put them right there in place of person. And now I have my type, my composite literal, right? Here's my type, and then my values, the curly braces and the values. And that's going to run too. So format that and run that. But that's an anonymous struct. It's anonymous because it doesn't have a name. This one is not anonymous. It has a name. It's person. This one does not have a name. <laughs> and so why would you want to do that? Well, you'd want to do that if you, you don't want to have code pollution. You want to keep your code lean and clean and not have extraneous types or variables where you don't need them. If you only need a struct to use in one little area, you could do it like this. You can make an anonymous struct and then you could have it. And so that's something that you'll see sometimes when looking at other Go programs, or that's what you'll see when looking at Go code. And that's an anonymous struct, and it's good to know about. <laughs>